Hello, and welcome back to another episode of our Hate Crime Awareness Campaign. Today, uh, our interviewee needs no introduction. We're speaking with the Justice Minister for Northern Ireland, Naomi Long. And she'll discuss uh, wider justice issues, but obviously centered on the topic of hate crime and specifically on the impact of the hate crime advocacy scheme. Here's what she had to say. Naomi, thanks for being with us here today. And no doubt many will be familiar with yourself and your work, but do you want to talk a little bit about your role as Justice Minister and some of the work you're, you're undertaking at the moment? Well, I suppose there are quite a range of things, but one of the things that I suppose for me has been really important. Um, when we did get the Assembly finally restored, we knew we only had two years essentially of a term, which is really quite short in terms of being able to deliver change. So I made a decision early on that the things I wanted to focus on were things that would be impactful, um, particularly to victims. So things that people would actually feel a difference after this two years, because as you'll appreciate, after three years of no assembly, there were people out there saying, well, what difference does the assembly really make? And so for me, part of the challenge has been of being justice minister is to say to people, not only this is what we can do in justice, but also this is why the assembly actually matters. These are the kinds of changes we can make. So we prioritised five pieces of legislation. Um, so we had um, the Domestic Abuse and Civil Proceedings Act, which is now law. Um, we have a stalking bill, uh, a committal reform bill, um, and also a personal injury discount rate bill. All sounds very technical, but actually all of them have an impact on people who are victims of crime or, or victims of um, negligence and so on. And then the last bill will come in the next month or so. Um, and that's a wider justice bill, which will look at some of the recommendations from Sir John Gillen's report into serious sexual offences. And that will come through. So that was one aspect. And then the other was looking at policy where we knew that if we did things slightly differently, we could make a big impact in terms um, of victims. Um, so for example, um, we've done a lot of work around how people give evidence in court and remote evidence centres. We've put in place domestic homicide reviews. We've also looked um, at a review of our hate crime legislation. Um, and then we've looked at some other pieces of work like sentencing review and so on that it won't be done in this term, but we will be able to legislate for in the next term. Um, so what we wanted, I suppose, and what I wanted to do was just to say to people, look, actually, you can make a difference by how you vote because the people that you elect can go to the assembly. They can change the law, but also they can change policy and practice um, and they can make a difference that you will feel in your own life in terms of the impact that it has. And I think work around victims in particular is a really important part of that. Excellent, excellent, Naomi. And uh, obviously the series uh, evaluates hate crime and what different statutory agencies and, and community organizations are, are doing to tackle hate crime. Uh, but just generally, why is hate crime advocacy important? Well, look, I think it's really important. I mean, first and foremost, I think hate crime really has an impact on our society. I mean, no crime is acceptable. So I'm not going to sit here and say that some crime is more important than others. But we know that the impact of crime varies depending um, on the victim uh, uh, and so on and the circumstances. And so hate crime has a particular impact because in that case, it isn't only that the victim feels very vulnerable. Um, because they feel that they may be subjected to similar attacks in the future and that they, that they therefore feel particularly vulnerable. But it's also the implication that has because it is a ripple effect within that community where other people, for example, of similar ethnicity or of similar um, gender or of a similar um, racial background or a similar religion may feel, well, I'm also now more vulnerable because there is somebody out there who wants to attack people like me. And so it's so important that we kind of get to the point where we're able, first of all, I think, to change attitudes in our society because whilst my job is to deal with people when they enter the justice system I also want to do work to stop people ever reaching the justice system so we can stop people becoming victims in the first place that's much better than treating them well as victims in the system and the second thing then is when they do have a bad experience that we're able to do the work that's required to support that individual in whatever way they might want support. And obviously for a lot of people who are victims of hate crime, whether that's disability hate crime, racially motivated hate crime, um, or whatever it might be, 
They may also um, be very vulnerable in terms of how they interact with the justice system. They may need special support, special advocacy, someone who can, for example, come forward and speak on their behalf if they don't feel confident enough to do that themselves, but also somebody to be there with them on their journey as they go through the justice system and give them that extra support that they might need. And so for me, the advocacy service is really important just in terms of building confidence and ensuring that people going through the system feel that it's working for them. But even if they don't feel that they want to report, just knowing that there's a third party there that they can talk to, raise their issues, raise awareness, um, and actually give them the support they need in terms of some of the other services that are available to victims through victim support and other things, I think is just incredibly important. Um, I suppose fr from my perspective, what I want to do is improve the experience that victims have because sometimes going through justice systems can be in itself quite traumatic if you're not used to being in court and victims it's often the first time they're ever in court in their lives is as a result of an incident that's happened um if you've never been in that situation before it can be quite a frightening and overwhelming experience so having someone there who understands the system to just guide you through and give you that bit of extra support can make all the difference um, and obviously then it's down to the various agencies well the psni the pps and the courts themselves and, and the, the judges and so on, what the outcome um, of any prosecution is, but at least it gives that person the additional bit of support to say, you're not on your own in this process and there's somebody there to assist. Excellent, excellent, Naomi. And um, uh, just kind of building on, on what you covered there, why has it been important for the DOJ to support and fund the hate crime advocacy scheme and what do you think some of its impact has been? Well, I think it's really important for us because, as I say, we want victims to come out the other end of, of this um, system, uh, the justice system, feeling that they have achieved justice. That's the first thing. Um, and whilst we can't promise what the outcome in a court case will be, we at least want them to be satisfied that they've had every opportunity to make their case, that they've been listened to, that they've been heard and that their issues have been responded to. And so the advocacy service is really important. It's also really important in terms of raising awareness because I think part of the issue in the wider community is that often these things go unnoticed or un un unheard. Um, and, you know, people are often then in a, feel very isolated um, if they've been subjected. To, to crime and that is true whether that person is a hate crime or any other crime people can feel very isolated very frightened but as I say in the case of a hate crime that can also send a ripple of fear through a wider section of our community so I think having the advocacy service there is really important I think it's also crucial because it allows us to draw on the experience and talent that's out there so it's not about people from the department providing this service. It's about bringing in people from, you know, Leonard Cheshire Disability, from the Migrant Centre, um, from um, the Rainbow Project and so on, working with victim support so that what we're doing is providing tailored support to victims of hate crime, actually understanding the, the, the ramifications of that for individuals and the kind of impact that it has on their lives and hopefully providing the right kind of tailored support. And for me, it's also crucial because it's not just a DOJ project it's also funded by the PSNI and I think that's really important because that engages more than just the department but also some of the justice agencies in terms of recognition actually that support for victims and working through that advocacy service is important and I think the reason it's so important for the PSNI is that the advocacy service will first of all often give people the confidence to come forward and report hate crime and that's really important for the PSNI whether they can prosecute it or not Actually being fully aware of the extent of it is really important in terms of how they set their priorities in policing. But also if, if, if they come forward and it can be prosecuted, having somebody there that can help an individual to kind of set out exactly what has happened in their experience and help the police and support the police get the best possible evidence increases the opportunities that we have to actually see people prosecuted successfully. So I think for all of those reasons, having the advocacy service is just so important. And I do think awareness raising often gets overlooked, but I do think we need to raise awareness of hate crime in our community and explain the reasons. You know, people will say, well, is hate crime a kind of thought crime? And it isn't you know there's an actual crime has been committed but the motivation matters because the impact that's felt in the community is different it's not just the one individual who's impacted by that crime it's a wider group of people who feel more vulnerable as a result of that crime having taken place
Excellent. Excellent. And so what, what do you feel are some of the considerations and barriers in addressing hate crime from a criminal justice or a policy point of view? Well, I think that there are a few things. I mean, first of all, I think that our legal framework here um, needs to be updated and, and, and changed. That's something that um, uh, Desmond Marinan took forward, Judge Marinan, in his review of hate crime law um, here and has brought forward quite an extensive um, list of recommendations as to how we should take it forward. There are gaps. There are some crimes at the moment um, which currently wouldn't be listed as hate crimes, but where there is increasing evidence that there is a motivation, um, a hate motivation behind some of those crimes. So for example, sectarianism is an example where currently it isn't as easily defined in terms of hate crime, but yet we know that there is a hate motivation behind it. And some of the things um, that Judge Marinan has indicated around that I think are, are really um, important for us to consider. But also things like gender and the impact that gender related hate crime has. Um, and people will automatically look to misogyny and mention that, but there's also those people who are transgender um, and so on who, who may find themselves subject to hate crime. And so looking at all of those, I think is really important and making sure that, you know, one of the things that um, Judge Marinan looked at was, do we need new laws or do we need new sentencing policy? Because obviously you could say, well, some of these crimes, you know, if you attack someone's home, if you physically assault someone, those are crimes and the law works for those. But is what we're trying to do, say, create um, an aggravation factor when it comes to sentencing to say, well, if you attack somebody who's from one of these more vulnerable groups, that means a higher sentence rather than just uh, it being an additional crime. So there's all sorts of things that he's looked at in that. And what we're going to be doing, obviously, in due course, is producing our response to that, along with an action plan in terms of how we're going to implement it. We would ideally, um, and indeed Judge Marinan said he felt it would be best that we bring forward a hate crime bill because of the short term, which I mentioned earlier, my huge frustration, because there's there's at least five years work that we could do in the department, but we've got this two year period and uh, you know we just need to, to try and contain what we do. But we're, we're hoping to bring that forward and start working on that over um, the next year so that we're in a position um, come the new mandate to actually start that legislation um, around hate crime. So we bring forward a formal hate crime bill um, to the Assembly and formalise some of our work around this. Again, an opportunity to send a strong message. I suppose the other problem in terms of prosecuting hate crime is first of all the, the fear that comes with being a victim of hate crime. So very often if someone has been subjected to homophobic bullying to um, a racist attack whatever it might be that in itself will make them feel vulnerable about coming forward and sharing their story because they're afraid of drawing attention to themselves and that's where the advocacy service is really important in terms of supporting them um, and helping them with that system but then also the collection of evidence and being able to um, collect the adequate amount of evidence first of all um, to detect the crime but then also um, just in terms of being able to prosecute that through the courts and often because of the nature um, of, of the hate crimes that people are subjected to that can be quite difficult. From our perspective it's really important um, that we work with victims of hate crime to try to build confidence in the system because we do want people to come forward, we do want them to bring um, the, the evidence of hate crime to us, we do want them to report these incidents even where they're low level um, because it's so important that we have a full understanding of the picture but also that the police are then aware of the kind of challenges that people are facing and are able to respond to that proactively in, in particular communities or neighbourhoods where we do have particular problems. Excellent, excellent, Naomi. And just, just last question here. What are some of the goals uh, you and the DOJ have for the hate crime advocacy scheme moving forward and maybe, maybe the wider advocacy sector as well? Yeah, well, look, I think for us, it's about ensuring that we get that kind of really bespoke um, information out to victims. We want to use that as an, as an opportunity to be able to raise awareness. We have the benefit of working with some really expert groups in terms of 
the kind of support and advocacy they can do. We don't only want to talk to them about crimes that have been committed, but we also want to talk to them about how we can build more resilience, how we can raise awareness, how we can improve inclusion in our society so that these crimes become less frequent. Um, and all of those things, I think, are roles that the advocacy service has an input to make and particularly some of the, the experts um, who support us as our community and voluntary sector partners in all of that. I suppose in terms of ambition I would like to see us um, in the next mandate I would like to see the department be able to bring forward a hate crime bill that will actually um, put this on a formal footing. I think that in itself will send a strong message about the seriousness with which we treat hate crime in Northern Ireland and I think it will also send a really strong message to victims of crime that we take it seriously and that we want to be there to assist them and that they deserve justice, not just tea and sympathy. Because it's very, it's all very well to say it's terrible. You know, I mean, how often have we said, you know, our thoughts are with somebody whose home has been attacked, whose car has been burnt, who's been assaulted in the street. And we feel bad about it and we send sympathy. But that's not justice if no one is held to account. And until people start to be held to account um, for crimes of that nature, I think that there is still a view in some parts of society that you can get away with it. And that needs to be tackled, but also perhaps a reluctance on behalf of those who are subjected to hate crime um, to come forward and share their story because they feel, well, what's the point if I'm going to go through all that and nobody's going to be held to account? So we need to get that balance right and give people the confidence to come forward um, to, to tell what's happened to them. Um, to assist the police and then hopefully to see successful prosecution and I think that by reviewing our hate crime laws we should be able to make that I think much easier in terms of getting prosecutions successfully passed but also as I say crucially sending out a message to those who think it's acceptable that it absolutely isn't acceptable um, no one should be attacked for who they are it doesn't matter what relate, what race, what religion, what colour, um, what creed anyone has. It doesn't matter if they have a disability. It doesn't matter what their gender orientation is or, or what their, their sexuality is. Nobody should be attacked for what they are. Um, and as a society, we need to learn to respect people um, and all their diversity. But more than that, to embrace diversity because actually Northern Ireland is a better place for the diversity that we have in our society. And what I want to do is not just protect victims and give them justice, but actually turn it around and look at how we can actually celebrate diversity and make hate crime a thing of the past.